I'm Brian Young. I'm Maureen Barry. We moved into the neighborhood in 2007, in the fall. I'm not sure of the exact year, but 1860-something, uh, this building was built. I believe it opened first as a grocery store, correct? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. The next thing I know that was super successful here was JoJo's Cafe in the 30s through 50s or something mm -hmm. like that. The woman who owned the building when it was American Saloon, she was not here. She was an absent landlord, so to speak, and just fell into disrepair rather rapidly in the last 10 years, 10 years or so. Mm -hmm. It wasn't attractive at all to look at. <laughs> and it's on our main thoroughfare through our neighborhood. It kind of gives a bad impression of the rest of the neighborhood. It was a uh, old building. It looked horrible. So we thought we want to take control of it. He had this vision for this place to be a neighborhood gathering spot. I guess it was maybe my idea. And then I got Joe Durkers, who was a commercial realtor in, in Dayton here. So we all invested a little bit. 32 neighbors. Yeah, 32 people invested like somewhere between $1,000 and $1,500. We were thinking, let's fix it up to a point where it can be attractive to someone to have a restaurant in here, or basically anything. Anything that we knew would be sustainable, and we won't have an empty building a year from now. We had it on the market for a year, over a year, and it was getting a little discouraging, I think, at that point, when you're trying to raise money in one of our fundraisers just to pay the taxes and you, okay well how long are we going to do this you know who's going to buy this and everybody who wanted to buy it we knew it, we, it was a bad idea no one had a business plan nobody had a proper business plan <laughs> one of my the funniest things i've ever seen is some of these business plans that come in <laughs> crazy a friend of mine called me from texas one day and said, hey, I think I got a, a good business model for your bar that you have empty. I'm like, really? Oh, okay, what is it? And he was like, it was a co-op. And at first, I, I really didn't think, oh, is that grocery stores and farmer, you know, feed stores and stuff like that. But um, he goes, no, it's really kind of cool. You should come, you should, you should look into it more. So I looked at their website. At first, you were like, God, that sounds like a lot of work. I don't, you know, I don't think we can do that. But the more he read about it, he liked it and all of a sudden we started thinking, we're like, hmm, across the courtyard would be kind of neat for a brewery. So we thought, let's see how, I mean, we did the dimensions, we kind of did some preliminary work. It all seemed to work. I think it just all sort of fell into place. Maureen and I went down to Texas over oh, Memorial, Memorial Day, Day weekend, and they're, they've been a super huge help. They're called Black Star, and they're the only other co-op running right now at the brew pub in the U.S., or probably in the world at this point. A brew pub is a place where you brew your own beer and you serve food. So there's breweries, but they just brew the beer and they'll distribute. And we just plan on brewing for our own you know, on-premise place here, and then we'll also be a restaurant. The more we learned about it, the more we thought it's the perfect fit because this started as a community project, and this was our way to, for it always to be a community project. It will definitely be Ohio's first brew pub co-op. It'll be the second in the nation. Anyone can join. It's, it's very actually a reasonable price for a brew pub of $100. That gets them ownership of the brew pub. We said, well, we, we want to have charter members by the end of July. With 300 people, we know it's a good idea. It's a go. If we don't get 300 people, we're going to reevaluate it and give the money back or whatever. We had 300 people in, <laughs> I think, two weeks or, or yeah. less. We have almost 900 right now, and it's only been... 42 days? Yeah, something like that, 42 days or something. You don't see a whole lot of co-ops going under because there's so much support from so many different people in the membership. It's very democratically run. They can run for the board someday and have input on that. They can all vote for the board if they don't want to run for it. That's a powerful model. It really is. No one gets rich, mind you. I mean, <laughs> there's no big, you know, the fat cat at the top ma making money. But it's a place to meet, have a beer, and bring people to your place. I mean, I know banks have it, you know, like credit unions are co-ops. 
but you, you know, want to go hang out there. Right. <laughs> it's, it's nowhere you want to go hang out. And, and it's, it's a really cool project to help an old building in a, in, in a really great neighborhood. But I think Dayton was kind of hungry for something like this, just something different, and I'm just glad people were open to it. No, I don't think There's... any big corporate savior is going to come and save Dayton. These independent little operations mm -hmm. are what's going to grow Dayton.